Hi guys, Matt with Monster VR. Um, once again, bringing you another chapter in learning C sharp programming with Unity 3D, a book by Alex Akita. And today we are looking at section four. Get more over here this time. 4.11 called Logic and Operators. So we can get into Unity. Have this. This is something we were working on yesterday. We'll just get rid of that. Bam. I'm gonna have the camera. Cool. All right. Logic and operators. Let's get started. Logic allows you to control what part of a function is evaluated based on changes to variables. Using logic, you'll be able to change which statements in your code will run. Simply put, everything you write must cover each situation you plan to cover. Logic is controlled through a few simple systems, primarily the if keyword and variations of if. Hmm, I did not know that. Bo booleans or booleans. Using George, George Boole's logic is a basic tool in nearly every programming paradigm. In C sharp, booleans or, or bools for short are either true or false. It's easiest to think of these as switches either in, on, or in, off position. To declare a variable as a bool, you must use, or you, you, you use something like the following. To start off, we will begin with bool project in Unity 3D, which they have a list of projects, but we're just gonna do this from scratch in here. So let's open up some code, and we're just gonna declare a variable which will be uh, public, which makes it accessible to everybody. I'm gonna go bool, and we'll call it sum bool. So that is a, that is a variable being declared at the top. It's a bool, and it's named sum bool. Cool. By using public, you'll expose the Boolean variable to Unity's 3D editor. The de declaration will also make the variable Okay. By using public, you'll expose the Boolean variable to Unity's 3D editor. The declaration will also make the variable appear in the inspector panel like so. The Boolean needs to appear here to be seen by the rest of the class in Unity 3D. We'll learn why in section 4.3 on scope, but we'll discuss, we'll, but we'll digress for now. Okay, so if we go here and we go to camera and we go to, let's add example CS, scripts, example, Oh, I didn't save it. Control S. And camera. Example and some bool. Aha, we can check it on and off because it's public. Cool. All right. Note C sharp does a pretty good job of automatically initializing many of its built built in types. Number values are always initialized to zero when they are not given a value. Bools are initialized as false when not given a value. This is handy to know since all, not all languages do this. For instance, L, L, Lua, you heard of, another commonly used game programming language, assumes nothing about the value until it's given one. Therefore, when any variable is first declared, it's initialized as a null, which is similar to C-sharp's behavior when creating a variable of a more complex data type. Though C-sharp calls this initialized state null, this means the same as nothing. For good measure, Unreal Script uses the keyword none to mean the same as null. Changes made before the game is run will be saved on that object. For making a game, for example, you can place treasure chests throughout a dungeon and set the amount of gold in each one. This is great since you will not need to make a different script for each treasure chest. So it says you would go back to the script. I'll get rid of some 
bool, and we'll go public int. Well, I, I don't like giving variables with capital. I don't like using camel cakes. All right, we'll hit Control S, save it, and gold right there. Bam! Starts off with zero. For instance, setting a number for gold in the treasure chest will allow you to change the gold in the e in each instance. So you can go here and go, I want ten gold. I want a hundred gold. One hundred. Go for it. Cool. So, equality operators. Equality operators create Boolean conditions. There are many ways to set a Boolean variable. For instance, comparisons between values are a useful means to set variables. The most basic method to determine equality is using the following operator, equal, equal. There's a difference between use of a single and a double equals to symbol, to symbol. Oof. There's a difference between use of a single and a double equals to symbol. Equals is used to assign a value, whereas double equal sign is used to compare values. Let me just give you an example of that real quick. Ooh, this, not Camtasia. I want Visual Studio. There we go. So for instance, we have equal, which is used to assign a value. So it would be, for example, go right here, and we'll go integer gold is equal to 10. Man. Command, control save, go here. We'll go to main camera. Gold is equal to zero. Oh, I didn't save it. Control S. We'll go back to Unity. Oop, Unity. Hmm. Why is that zero? Why is that ten? Maybe because it's public. Hmm. I don't know. How people figure that out? Equal to 10. Integer, public integer, gold is equal to 10. It's not a float. You want to be a float? It's an integer. Huh. I don't know. Okay. Anyway. A basic example. Oh, actually, no. There's a difference between use of a single and double equals to symbol. Equal is used to assign a value, whereas double equal is used to compare values. So, this is supposed to be to assign a value, which that should assign gold, that value of 10. I don't know what's going on there. Um, but this would be a double equal sign, and that is used to compare values. So for instance, this and this, comparing their values to each other, pretty sure. Anyway, we'll do a basic example. When you compare two values, you can use the following concept. You'll need to remember that these operators are called equality operators. If you need to talk to a programmer, the syntax here may look a, a bit confusing at first, but there are ways around it. So we'll just get rid of this for now. Get rid of this guy. And in the start method, we will put some bool is equal to Parentheses one equal equal one parentheses semicolon. Uh, we need to declare some bool though over the top. So we'll go uh, public. Bool, sum, bool. Perfect. Bam. All right. 
So now that's good there, that's good there. We hit control S, which is saved. Let's see what happens. It's the wrong stuff. There we go. Let's hit play. Nothing. Hmm. Big over here. Oh, some bulls right here. Perfect. There are other operators to be aware of. You will be introduced to the other logical operators later in the chapter. In this case, we are asking if two number values are the same. When the game is started, you'll be able to watch the sum bool check itself true. Ah, that's what we were looking for. So we're gonna look for this right here. Play. Boom, there it is, all right. Perfect. To make this more clear, we can break out the code into more lines. Now we're looking at versus B. Clearly, no, we're looking at A versus B. Clearly, they don't look the same. They are different letters after all. However, they do contain the same integer value, and that's what's really being compared here. So, I'm going to go back to the code, Visual Studio, and in the start function, backspace, we'll put it A is equal to 1. I N T B equal to one sum bool is equal to parenthesis A equal equal B Ah shit shoot sorry shoot all right, let's run it and see what happens. Control S. Nope, checked itself again. Cool. Evaluations have a left and a right side. The single equal to the operator separates the different sides. The left side of the equals is calculated and looks to the value to the right to get to get its assignment because one equals one double equals one that is to say one is equivalent to one the final result of the statement is that some bool is true the checkbox is turned on and the evaluate, the evaluated statement is done as, as you might expect changing the value in one of the variables will change the outcomes of this equality test so let's go to, and we'll go one, but we'll call this one three. And we'll see what happens. Three, three. Uh oh. Ah, uh, that's what happened. Close the semicolon. Clear. We'll hit play. And it doesn't check itself because it's not true. So it's automatically false. That makes sense. As you might expect, changing the value in one of the variables will change the outcome of the equality test. Some bool will be clicked off because the statement is no longer true. Or in plain language, is a equal to B? The answer is no. Or as far as some bool is concerned, false. All right, cool. If and branching. In the bool project from the downloaded content, we can control the rotation of the cube in the scene by adding an if logic statement. If statements are sometimes called branching statements. Branching means that the operation of code will change what code is executed. So let's do, let's throw a cube in here. We'll go game object. Create 3D object and a cube. Boop. All right. Now we have a cube. Now let's uh, take this example script off of this one. Remove component. We'll go to the cube. We'll do move that out of the way. Add component. Um. Script. Example scripts. 
Cool. Now we'll open the Visual Studios, and then we'll start plugging this thing in. All right. Perfect. All right, and avoid start. We're gonna go sum pool is equal to one. Oh, oh. one. What the heck is going on here? One equal to one. Why can't I get that one thing? There we go. Jeez Louise. Wham. Perfect. Go integer a is equal to one integer b equal to three sum rule is equal to a equal B and then we're going to create our if statement some pool wool there we go this is a wacky statement they're having us right here all right if Conditional statement sum or argument past that sum bool variable sum bool transform dot rotate. Vector three forty five F. You all have to have F's because they're all floats, float values. Go F and bam. Cool. Transform dot rotate, new vector three. 45 float, zero float, zero float. All right, let's save. Let's see what happens. Play. Nothing's happening. Two, some bull. Nothing's happening. The variable sum bool becomes true once the right side of the statement is evaluated. Before the assignment, it remains in the state it was before the assignment. If you leave the sum bool variable in the inspector panel and the editor unchecked, it will check itself on when you run the game. Likewise, we can also show the following. Ah, so we go. Check itself. So if we go here, and you want to say instead of some bool, we just put if true, command control S. I don't know what this does. This is what they're having me do here. I got to rotate.
jazz rotate a little bit. Okay. Yep, rotates 45. Cool. All right, that did work. Let's go back to the code. The if statement is always followed by a pair of parentheses, which is followed with right here. Oh, if print the following, which is followed by an opening and closing curly brace. The contents of the parentheses tell the compiler whether or not to execute the contents of the following curly braces, which are right here. If the contents of the parentheses are false, then the contents of the curly braces are ignored. So, for example, if some bool, if some bool, control S, doesn't move so it says ignore so basically because some bool was not true it didn't rotate this or it wasn't equivalent since these weren't equivalent it didn't rotate this yeah yeah makes sense as you might expect here by clicking some bool to true before the game is run the object this script is attached to will rotate 45 degrees on the x axis let's try that q no it did not do that hmm If not, then the cube will not be rotated with the game it's is started. This is out of on your own to observe the results. If some bool, blah, 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 blah. Move the code into the update function, and you'll be able to turn the cube while the game is running. We don't have code yet to turn it back, so this is a tr so it's a trick that only works once. We'll find out later how to make this more interesting. So we'll go... Mm. Put it in the update function. Let's go back to the code. We'll take this. Control X. Control V. And let's run it. It's like wigging out. Wow! Keep switching. Every frame, 45. That worked. Cool. There are so many ways to control how booleans are set. The keyword if is used most often to control the flow of your logic. Simply put, if something is true, then do something. Otherwise, C sharp will ignore the statement and move on. And move on as we have observed. What if we want to do the opposite? Not. If we are looking for a false value trigger and an evaluation of code, we need to look for a not true to evaluate the if statement. This code would look slightly different as included in the exclam or the not operator. So it would be if we go back and go if some bool so if you go like that. If some bool is not true, do this. Bam. And it does it. Cool. The change reverses the behavior of the if statement. If you leave some bool as false when the if statement is evaluated, then code inside of the curly brace is evaluated. In this case, the exclamation point is called a not. The not looks for a false value to determine if the if statement will be evaluated, or rather it reads the sum bool as what is not. We can use this in another way with another equality operator. Whoa. Okay, let's try this. We say to go in here and go sum bool is equal to a Bam. 
Yeah, you're doing anything. Crazy. The not operator is read as not equal, which looks like at, as the following and returns false. Yep, it did. When A equals one and B equals one, they are equal. Some bulls asking, is a not is A not equal to B? The answer is false. A is not not equal to B. The logic can get a bit awkward, but it's the same as double negative in English grammar. Hmm, crazy. What else do we got? This is a big chapter. Whew. This is gonna be a really big chapter. All right, we'll do a few more and then I might cut this part into two. Flowcharts. Flowcharts, sometimes called activity diagrams, are often used to graph out an algorithm or flow of logic. This makes a whiteboard in a programmer's office a sort of visual workspace for testing out a concept to create a piece of code. There is software available that can reverse engineer code and build a flowchart diagram to help visualize what the code is doing. In the 1970s, Paul Morrison of IBM wrote a book on flow-based programming. This book takes the idea of, of following data between nodes connected by lines to write software. Unfortunately, the concept has yet to take hold and traditional written code remains prominent. The concept is still powerful and learning how flowcharting works is helpful. The flowchart involves three parts, a beginning, an end, logic, and a sequence. Code we've written so far is like the below. So, um, this code be translated into nodes. So we'll do get rid of this. And we'll do an update function. We'll go integer i is equal to one if parentheses i is less than ten parentheses debug dot log i is less than 10 run this see what happens this code can be translated into nodes with the following diagram so you see right here what I have is integer i is equal to 1 and I wrote an if statement if i is less than 10 run this line of code which is print to the console i is less than 10 um, as we can see here this code can be translated into nodes with the following diagram. And it's like a little tiny diagram right there. I don't know if you can see it, but it's like start. And then i is greater than 10. Yes. Then debug.log i is less than 10. If it's no, then end the statement. So let's run it. Console.log. Play. Bam. I is less than 10, I is less than 10, I is less than 10, I is less than 10. Cool. So that's working. With some diagramming schemes, however, it's easy to lose some charity. Clarity, excuse me. The more the data added, let's get back in here. The more the data added to a diagram, the more confusing it can be. However, in a general form, logic used and the results of that application are easier to understand. It's because of the simplicity some programmers opt to, opt to diagram a complex problem with a flowchart. Once you are able to trace the behavior of your data from start to end, it becomes more clear what your code must do. Using a flowchart as a guide, you can have a better idea what your code must accomplish when you start writing. 
Game designers should also be able to explain a specific design decision in terms of flowchart. When a monster shows up, the game when a monster shows up, the game designer must be able to explain with simple logic what happens next. User interfaces and even the computer's AI behavior. All these game events can benefit from having a flowchart as a basis for design decisions. Cool. So I think we're going to stop there for today. Um, we're in the half. We're halfway through this 411 um, logic and operators. Um, next time we'll, we'll cover relational operators um, in the same chapter since it's a big one. Um, and then like the next over the next couple of chapters, it's going to get a little hairy. We're going to get into some really good logic and stuff. So, guys, thanks again for watching. Um, once again, my name is Matt with Monster VR, and uh, I'll see you next time. See you.